So good morning, everyone. I'm Angie, uh, the MBA director and assistant professor at the management and marketing department. Today, with my colleague and friend, Dr. Maria, we are going to talk about uh, uh, the game-based learning, which is a new topic. Uh, we have been I have been presenting this paper, of course, co-authored with Dr. Maria, uh, within one international conference, which is COPS conference in France. And um, our paper is basically about enhancing learning outcomes and achieving uh, uh, learning outcomes achievement, sorry, in higher education using gaming strategies. We took the case of business courses. So our presentation will be as follow. We'll start with introduction, then we'll move to literature review. We we'll talk about the context of the study, then we'll share with you our gaming process, then the main findings of our research, and then we'll conclude uh, with what we come up with. I will start with the introduction. So uh, today we are operating within a very challenging environment. I'm talking about education, education and higher education specifically. That's why today we have an increasing emphasis on a new concept, a new trend in education called game-based learning. And um, this game-based learning specifically when within the context of higher education. So today we have or we are witnessing a shift from the teacher-centered approach to more of a learner-centered approach. As instructors, we have to shift from being one way lecturing from instructor to students. We have to have more folks today on the learner as the learner, the center of the educational system. And this is the main idea and the principle of the game-based learning. We are taking this within the context of higher education because uh, gaming has proven its effectiveness in attracting students and achieving learning outcomes. So, how game-based learning is effective within the context of higher education? It's really effective in terms of the following. First of all, through studies, we came up with that game-based learning is really effective as really helping capturing students and learner attention. Second, game-based learning is a good way to boost students' motivation. And also game-based uh, game -based learning is really helping us promoting skills acquisitions, which are the trend today within education. So within our paper, and this paper aims to basically to show you through examples, the effectiveness of implementing game-based education within higher education, I mean within business courses. Going through the literature review, we end up that the game-based learning is really broad and it's really including four approaches, not only one. And as you can see here, sorry. So we have the game-based learning and under the game-based learning, we have the curriculum-based educational gaming and the learning by making games. We'll go deep into these. And as you can see, we have, as I told you, so game-based learning as a starting point is really representing a kind of very interactive educational construct and approach, and that's really uh, focusing on gaming strategies implemented and added within the course. And uh, in such case, we are kind of improving the teaching and the learning experience for students by uh, equipping them with knowledge and also helping them acquiring skills all along the learning process. Also, using these gaming strategy in higher education, it would help providing the learners with the abilities to use their knowledge, their skills, their creativity, to expand their problem-solving capabilities, and so on. Also, the game-based learning, it's a good way to promote the knowledge of oneself and also to help students improving more their engagement, to have more uh, achievement, and also to have a kind of self-determination. Game-based learning, as I told you, it's really including four approaches. So these approaches are the student, the first approach is the student who is becoming the designer of the game, and they are 
leading the activity and the gaming, and they are making everything. The second approach is basically called gamification. For the gamification in this context, we are talking about using elements related to gaming within non-gaming context. And the third one, it's gamification, but through technology. It means technology-mediated gamification by using computer software like PlayStation and so on, and classes. And the last one is the educational gaming system. And in here, I'm talking about making gaming as part of your curriculum, very aligned with your learning outcomes and your learning content. Unfortunately, according to the literature, there is a little emphasis on the first and the fourth one. They are focusing too much on gamification or gamification through technology. However, they didn't focus within the higher education context on the first one while the students, they are going to lead the activity or taking education, I mean gaming, as part of your pedagogy, as part of your strategy, and as part of your curriculum. That's why in our paper, me and Dr. Maria, we have been focusing on the first and the fourth one as a way to add to knowledge and also because we have been implementing that in our classes. So our selected approaches, as I told you, we have been selecting the curriculum-based educational gaming, and the second approach is the learning by making games. I will start with the first approach selected, which is the curriculum-based educational gaming. The curriculum-based educational gaming, uh, as per the literature, has proven its positive impact on uh, the learning outcomes, on the ability of the faculty to achieve the learning outcomes related to that specific course. Uh, in terms of either skills or knowledge or whatever. The second one also, thanks to this, a learner, they will be more exposed to higher level of learning and trust. They will enjoy, they will be more engaged, they will be more motivated, and also they will have higher self-confidence and also self-determination. Uh, this is also, it would lead to uh, an, increasing level, an increased level of attendance, also high cognitive level, and better academic success rate proven as per the different studies. Also, the concept of curriculum-based learning is designed to promote active participation, collaboration, rivalry, I mean competition between students, motivation, teamwork, and interaction. However, curriculum-based uh, learning, it's an excellent tool to promote uh, learning outcomes, to involve students. However, it will be non-effective if it's not aligned with the subject, the level, the content, and the curriculum. In such context, I mean the instructor is requested to, first of all, to make or to design the educational game as part of the curriculum. But it's a whole strategy, it's a whole pedagogy that they have to work on, not a kind of best practice or standardized game incorporated or let's say put it within the curriculum. No, it should be one whole designed for the whole curriculum. And this is to be effective and efficient. It should be from the beginning very aligned with what is called the learning objective and outcomes. As you can see within this graph, here we have the Bloom's taxonomy, and that is really reflecting the different levels. In other words, I would like to say, if, for example, an instructor is teaching a level one, when we are, our learning outcomes are more of just uh, remembering or understanding. In such case, the, your curriculum gaming should be very aligned with your learning outcomes, should be very aligned with your objective, with your target, and with your discipline. I will take an example. If when I take, for example, bingo as a game that we are going to incorporate within our subject, I think bingo in uh, OB, it's going to be totally different than bingo in math. This is, I mean, in uh, the alignment between the discipline, the target learner, the level, and the overall pedagogy strategy should be very clear for the instructor in order to reach the high level of effectiveness of what is really called the game based learning or the curriculum based learning because curriculum it's not only using game but it's designing your strategy around the game the second one which is most of 
learning my making games and there's this second approach while the learner they are the game designer and I will leave the floor to Dr. Maria to talk about this. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Salam alaikum, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Um, first of all, before getting into this, I want to express uh, how it felt to me when my friend, dear friend, sister, and colleague, Dr. Angie, approached me uh, and gave me, told me the idea of, of writing this paper. Um, the first thought that came into my mind, and I think I said it out loud, is like, really? What we've been doing exists internationally as a theory, as a model? I, I thought I'm just making something up you know, that, that only I am doing in the world. And that just made me feel, immediately feel so proud of myself and my colleague and confident and proud of Ahliya that because we're all members in the community of Ahliya. So when we create something, when we are, become creative in our thoughts and our methods of solving uh, issues or, or enhancing our courses, pedagogies, uh, uh, any processes, it will really, really help uh, us and the uh, community of Ahliya shine. So I really, truly felt really proud in that, that what we're doing is internationally recognized and just started. It has just started uh, uh, theoretically, uh, but I first started this learning by making games nearly a decade ago. The idea came to me when I was first certified as an emotional intelligence trainer. So I, as a vocational course, uh, uh, where, where there is, it was completely non-academic, I got the idea of uh, the games we played in order to learn the different skills of emotional intelligence to the classroom whenever we came to the emotional intelligence topic in the organization behavior uh, course. And from there, I expanded it to other topics. So it's like, OK, there are some games related to emotional intelligence. I can uh, let the students play for other topics, other related topics. Then I started developing my own games. And then the thought came to me. It's like, why don't I give them a project where they make the games themselves after they have witnessed the games I have uh, let them play throughout the semester. They say the best way to learn is to teach, okay? All right, and which is which is practicing uh, uh, what you what you uh, learn theoretically. So, re learning by doing exactly. So, best way to learn is to teach. So, I, I tell them from the beginning of the semester, this is going to be your project. You're gonna. Uh, uh, watch the games and play the games during the first half of the course and then the next half of the course you're going to build the games yourselves at first they get into panic and shock now they don't anymore because it's been nearly 10 years so students tell each other and so they know what to expect and students have come up with brilliant ideas creative ideas of games which uh, one of which you will see the video, I, I myself adopted and used it for another topic under organization behavior and I proudly informed the audience that this is designed by my students and not me. And I'm just uh, adopting it. Okay, so just wanted to make that, uh, come take that share from my heart to yours. <laughs> okay, so learning by making games, that's the idea. Uh, uh, learning by teaching. So, um, Basically, uh, th th this is uh, the sample we uh, worked on or we uh, uh, studied and analyzed, which was a, a cohort of uh, two semesters students for, uh, registered in organization behavior uh, course, uh, uh, which practiced both curriculum-based gaming, like I said, they see the games in the beginning, and then learning by making games. These were around 20 years old. Uh, they, uh, the ILOs that were covered during these uh, learning outcomes, transferable skills, subject 
specific skills and critical skills, which is uh, all the uh, basically assessment B, C, and D. Okay. Um, these are undergraduate school, uh, students of ours and under the business school, management marketing, uh, specialized uh, particularly. Uh, we uh, documented these, uh, 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 let's say, uh, games. I always take videos and pictures and, and document all these games that are created. Now, here was the, the gaming process. They were enrolled 2017-18, uh, like I said, two semesters. A total of 57 students, 25 and 32, in either, uh, respectively. Uh, the course uh, syllabus in OB, we have, like economics, you have micro OB and macro OB. The students, ah, that's another challenge I, I, I solved uh, using creative ideas and then mer merged it into gaming. When I first took our organization behavior course was given to me. I am Allah Yathkarab al Khair, Dr. Jamal al I I saw the course being really, really uh, uh, rich and, and deep. And I felt like four months is not enough for so many topics to be covered. What to do, what to do. And then I noticed this okay, the, the micro OB part, which is, which is all the topics related to learning about the individual such as motivation, personality types, emotions, attitudes, skills, abilities. These are all uh, uh, managerial psychology topics that are related to, to understanding the individual in an organization. What are macro OB topics? These are like team building, leadership, uh, uh, conflict uh, resolution, power, and, and stuff like anything that communication, anything that has to do with more than one person and to the dynamics of, of groups and teams. Okay, is there enough time to cover all of these uh, in, in a lecture format? No, okay, absolutely not. What to do? Okay, so uh, how are the games uh, designed? That uh, they do, a, they do a, a, a raffle draw for two things. Uh, no one knows who will work with who. So first of all, I shuffle them up. And then anybody who cries and says, no, I can't do that, I said, at work, you, gone, you don't get to decide who your company is going to employ and, and, and let work with you in the department. That's number one. So you have to suck it up and, and do it. Okay? That's one. Number two, they raffle, do the raffle draw on the topic. And these are all macro OB topics. So they have to ex explain do literature review, read latest articles on that topic, so no touching of the textbook, uh, then present it without slides. Slides are forbidden, okay? Uh, so that they would focus on their own creative abilities to, to present. They will present in groups, and then let, let us, including me as their student, uh, play the game which they created, understand that macro OB topic. So, so that's how uh, the whole thing was put together, okay? So I already explained that. Okay, now this slide explains the process of uh, uh, gaming in the uh, entrepreneurship and, that's it, entrepreneurship, yes. right? Okay. And the OB, so entrepreneurship part. Uh, as Dr. Maria said, when we have been working on this paper, we have been thinking to take the two courses as, a, as an, a case my entrepreneurship course and her course. But by the end, because we found in it, we can make more than one paper, so we have been focusing on OB. But still, we've, even with the OB, we try to align the creative process. This is the creativity process. And we noted that through this approach, by combining both curriculum-based educational gaming plus the learning by making games, we are exactly implementing the creativity process in class on, let's say, as part of our curriculum. As you can see, Dr. Maria has just mentioned, we have the micro OB and the macro OB. Two parts, the syllabus is divided in two elements. For the micro OB, it's more of what I have explained to you, it's more of the curriculum based. The whole curriculum, selecting the intended learning outcomes, selecting your strategy, your pedagogy, by delivering to the students the knowledge, 
And in that stage, we are falling in the first part of the creativity process, which is basically we are supposed to give knowledge to the students, prepare them, giving them that chance to incubate. Incubate, I mean receiving the knowledge, preparing them, and then to move on to the second part. For the second part is basically, as she said, starting from week 10, because we have a division. We are dividing the, syllab the syllabus also in terms of week. Dr. Marie is starting from week 10. She is moving to the second part of the, this, the process, which is more of students now, they start to evaluate, they start to think, they have to be creative, because as she said, topics are given to them. Now they have to think, and they have to end up with the elaboration. The insight in between is that wow moment. While the student, they have to say, yes, I got it. Now I know what to do. I know what, what, what kind of game that I have to design. I know the topic very well. I need to move to think about how to implement it. But before the implementation, they have to go and evaluate. This is wrong. No, this is, can be improved. And they have to end up with the elaboration, which is by the game-based training session. And Dr. Maria will explain the game-based training session as the, within the three last weeks of the course. Thank you, Doctora. So GBTS is game-based training session. After they have created the learning by making games, now they've prepared everything, and you will be amazed. You know, I wish you would. Uh, everybody's invited, by the way. I, I sometimes announce uh, that this during this week, two weeks, uh, the organization behavior students are going to uh, teach uh, the, uh, the topics through, through games. So... Um, you can see the, the, you know, they lit up. They, they have these aha moments, one aha moment after the other, because they are, are they like, it's an aha moment, a raw moment. Okay, that was well, like, like, I we will show you their comments. Okay, um, because they make the, they come, they ask, and um, um, uh, teamwork. Yani, you, there are indirect things that they will learn as well. They work to. They learn to work in in, in teams. They learn to do research and download uh, articles and do literature review and criticize and extract what they need from articles. And we're talking uh, third year uh, students, uh, bachelor degree students. It is not easy. For for me, the first time I saw a scientific article was during my masters uh, as as. as uh, Bachelor degree, we do computers, computer science is all programming and, and really technical stuff. But uh, with uh, uh, bachelor degree, it's not easy to leave a textbook and look at something very complex written uh, piece. But even though, because they're working as a team, they're able to extract, they're able to create games and, and, and come up with... Uh, so even students' attendance increase this is out of real attendance sheets okay uh, thanks to uh, uh, dr angie um, she's a much much better statistical analyst uh, than i am i like qualitative uh, uh, world of uh, constructionism so so she took all those uh, documents from me here uh, because for research purposes we have been tracking the student attendance through adrish we have been tracking the student attendance starting from week one to till week 15. And as you can see, these are real statistics attracted from others, just converted into uh, Excel sheet and into graphs. And um, why I would like to emphasize in here, as you can see, attendance starts very low. And then once Dr. Maria started the curriculum-based approach, which is involving the students, as you can see, the these were two semester, semester one, semester two. Starting from week six till week 15, in the last three weeks, and I've been talking about the highest level of attendance. And this is through Adrij. So this is really proof what we have seen in the literature in the curriculum-based learning and learning by making games is really impacting student attendance. Not only that, we'll have something else. So 93.55 in average student attendance in the class without being forced to attend, being highly involved, motivated, and mainly, mainly having fun. ILOs. As Sura fi Ghana and Al Tarif say the ILOs uh, be it uh, analytical thinking, the uh, transferable skills, all uh, really maximized to above ninety percent uh, uh, in the learning because of it. And I witness it. I'd like to go to the comments. Uh, high level interaction, all this we already said. The comments that the students made. 
these are actual copy pasted uh, comments from them so yeah uh, uh, like this i like the idea of designing our own training games uh, it's so unique and helpful i learned how to have good coordination and building relations with my colleagues it was an opportunity to learn how to think outside of the box when they say coordination because like we're doing right now you know go back and forth like ping pong ball they are sometimes four standing and they have to uh, train to you know come zone in zone out on time while they present and and train their their colleagues uh, it's easier to understand the topic uh, this way and of course more fun the word fun in in the in the Sci emotion psychology means a lot because uh, scientifically proven uh, people who learn best laugh the most are those who laugh you make your students laugh it will burn into their brain like cd burner okay uh, the the information you give them you make them laugh during class um, um, the, the, you make them learn by having fun they will go into flow flow gives them 100 percent focus on what they're doing. There has to be involvement of the students. So they help them improve their thinking. Some of them were really shy. They you know, came out of the, uh, uh, the, the box with self-confidence, okay, and so on and so forth. There are more of these, but these are the main themes that, uh, that uh, occurred. Uh, the, the top right, bottom, and le bottom left are from Victoria Angie's uh, entrepreneurship. The top left, is the uh, one of the top games designed until now for the past several years uh, no game yet designed as good as this one it they it was it was the idea of one student but then her colleagues took it and elaborated uh, even more on it there is a video okay now when you this is in the theater now you will see students uh, playing with balloons or bursting balloons but there is, I will explain to you what is behind this. This topic was uh, types of conflict, okay? In organization, we have different type of, uh, of, of conflict. This uh, uh, student thought of a uh, 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 crime case, okay? Uh, a crime case uh, with, and she brought uh, pictures, different scattered pictures, of the body and the, the like some pills and you know some pictures as as evidence okay and she put the pictures on on one uh, sheet and then she put uh, some scattered uh, statements also here and there and she made copies of it not she only she that this team who, who uh, taught us topic of conflict and uh, they distributed us into groups and then as we came into the theater, they had uh, a plate of, of a basket of chocolates with different colors. They applied what I did to them. They did to me <laughs> that, that uh, ran we randomly get this. So uh, the chocolates were in four colors. The balloons were in four colors. So as you come in, you take a chocolate. Then they say, according to your chocolate color, you sit with your group. I wahda. Then you can only go and burst the balloons that are similar to your team's color. Inside the balloon, you will find clues, further clues to complete the picture and come up with, uh, uh, is this person killed, murdered, or uh, uh, suicidal, okay? Now, what has this got to do with conflict? Everybody in the team will have their own conclusion or ideas. Different people think differently. اللي يقول لا هو قتل روحه واللي قال لا هو انقتل وصار الصراع والجدال في في داخل كل تيم اوكي ان ان ذن افتر وي فينيش دي ديد ا راب اب اور ا ريكاب ريكاب از ا ترينر دي ليرن اي 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 ليت ذم هيلب ذم ليرن تو بي ترينرز از ا ترينر از نوت انف جست تو ليت ذا بيرسون بلاي ا جيم يو هاف تو دو ريكاب اند ريليت سو دي سيد uh, what type of conflict do you think you had in your team? And before that, they had explained the theory behind the type of conflict. And each one of us answered, uh, we, we went through this type of conflict. We were, why? And then we explain why. 
And, and that's it. There is no way you would forget such a thing because you're answering, you're playing, you're doing. I use that exact game for emotional intelligence training, not for conflict. And I told them that uh, this is designed by, by my students. It was at, actually at Polytechnic, Bahrain Polytechnic. I was invited to uh, train their students in their summer, summer uh, school of last year uh, to do uh, emotional intelligence training session for them. And uh, I used exactly what, uh, what the students are, are doing over there. And these are all examples of, you know, how you can see student collaboration and they take on and on. With Dr. Angie, mashallah, uh, 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 some of her programs, even alumni come join in once they hear that the same program is, uh, is being done again uh, in, that, in that course. So a uh, lot of gaining uh, is, is, is there. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sorry, tawalla alaykum. And uh, if there is any questions. My last word. So thank you so much, as Dr. Maria said, and I would like to say only one thing. When I have been presenting this paper last year, uh, as I told you, in an international conference where we, have been at, we had attendees from more than 100 countries worldwide, and I can share with you their feedback. To be honest, they have been surprised, and now within that, we as faculty, within our university, we have to say we are very proud that we are one of the leaders, let's say, or pioneer in practicing game-based learning as a new approach in education today. Game-based learning is a new trend worldwide. It's not only within, uh, it's a new trend worldwide, as I told you, so it's a new concept. And uh, we are so happy that our Ahli University is really practicing and encouraging all faculty and uh, to involve, or let's say, to use that. Uh, not only me and Dr. Maria, there are a lot of other colleagues who are using game-based learning. They are even using uh, like Kahoot as technology, I mean through uh, technology, I mean mediated computer. There are other faculties who are using it in different ways. But the conclusion, yes, in Moodle for finance, for example. So the conclusion in here is uh, game-based learning can be applied in any subject, in any course, regardless of the course, for any level. And the faculty has the freedom and the flexibility to customize it the way he or she wants. The most important thing that to end up with a very nice learning experience for the learner and for the students. Thank you so much.